So hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the Lebed Alta Measure. So I am managing Jeremiah, President Matt. I'm also popularly known as Jerry Springer. So this this video is a tutorial on the Lebeg Outer Measure. This will actually be the first lecture, and it's a tutorial, and uh, it's it's not going to it's a it's going to explain Lebeg measure. I'm start, I will start from the concept of length, and I'm going to be giving key point or what is very important and essential why we are talking about the Lebeg measure. The first thing is, um, of course, we know length. Length is denoted as this: the length of an interval. We are given an interval a comma b. The length of this interval obviously will be equal to b minus a. Uh, this is a closed interval. Even if you are given an open interval, the length of an open interval like this is also b minus a. We know that to be the length. Now, if you are what will be the length of say from minus infinity to a, the length of this one, of course, you will have a minus then you have minus infinity. At the end of the day, you will see that the length of this one will be infinity. The same thing happens to this one as well. Uh, when you are giving a to infinity, this one will be infinity minus a. But um, since you have infinity as a, as the upper bound, the answer will still be infinity because infinity minus any any value, any number, is still infinity. So that is uh, the aspect of the concept of length. I want to explain the Lebesgue Alter measure. But uh, I'm trying to build it from the concept of length. Now, imagine something like this. Um, find the value or compute. Let's, let's say compute. Compute this. Imagine you are told to compute this. You should compute the. You should compute B, which is equal to the union. K starting from 1, union of K starting from 1 to infinity, union of K starting from 1 to infinity of the set 1 over K plus 1 is less or equal to S less than 1 over K. Imagine you are told to compute this. You can compute this. What this one will be, or um, giving this, I'm supposed to write like this, giving, giving B to be equal to this, then you should compute the length, you should compute the length of B. So now, solution. Solution. What we are going to do first here is that since we want to compute B, the first thing is I would say let I K that's an interval. Let I K be equal to this one over K plus one less or equal to X less than one over K. In reality, this one is same thing as uh, um, this half closed interval, this is an half closed interval of 1 over k plus 1, comma 1 over k open. And of course, we can see that this interval uh, is, is, is disjoint. Since it's open here, since it's closed there and it's open here, it's disjoint. Because if you, if you put k to be 1, this is 1 over 2, comma 1. Put k to be 3, that will be union. Well, if you put k to be 2, rather this one will be 1 over 3, comma 1 over 2. Um, if you take the intersection of these two, actually, the intersection will be empty because there is no point of intersection between them. This is 
this is uh, let's say here is one over two and here is one this is one this is one and this is one over two this is one over two let's say here is one over three as well one over three does not touch this one it um i did not i did not show you when well. um let this place be one over two for instance and here will be one so this is how it is. Now let's let be one over three. That means it is closed here and it's open here. You can see that it is it is this joint. It is this joint. That is the intersection is empty since it's open here. So that would be okay. So since I want to find the length of B, the length of B will be equal to the length of the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of ik i've already told you that all these ones should be denoted in ik so by the property of length this union will come outside when the union come outside it becomes summation k starting from 1 to infinity of the length so the union will come outside it will become a yeah, summation it will now remain length of i k. So since k i k is an interval, so the length of i k. Let's look for the length of i k. The length of i k will be equal to since i k is an interval, the length of i k will be one over k minus one over k plus one. One over k minus one over k plus one. So length of b length of b will be equal to summation of k starting from one to infinity of the length of i k is one over k minus one over k plus one that's what we are going to have so this will be equal to length of b will be equal to since it is to infinity i can write limit as n goes to infinity of summation of k starting from 1 to n of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1 so let's compute the summation this one will now be equal to limit as n goes to infinity of k starting from 1 to n. When k is 1, when you put k to be 1, and this one will give me 1 minus 1 over 2 plus uh, when k is 2, k, since k starts from 1, k1, k, k equal 1, k equal 2, t, you get to n. When k is 2, I have 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and it goes on till you get to n. So you get to 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. So that's what we are going to have. So that the length of So, so the length uh, that so the length of B will be equal to limit as n goes to infinity of what I have inside it. Notice that what is here is telescoping. It's telescoping because you can see that minus one over two will remove one over two. Minus 1 over 3, we remove 1 over 3. Minus 1 over 4, we remove 1 over 4. And on and on like that. You can see, when I added the first three, the first three things in the bracket, I'm left with 1 and minus 1 over 4. So if I, if I compute to this place, I'll be left with 1 and minus 1 over n plus 1. So what you'll be left with here will be 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. That's what we are going to be having, is telescoping. So, if you continue like that, you will see that you will be left with the first thing here, which is 1, and the last thing in the brackets.
in the last bracket you open or you solve. So that's what you are going to have. So limit at n tends to infinity. As n tends to infinity, this one will become zero. So this is one. So that means the length of v, the length of that thing, of that one we are giving is equal to one. That's what we are going to have as the answer. So now I need to write the property of length. I'm going to state the property of length without proof. Properties of length. The first thing is number one is that length number one. Let I need to I need to Define, I need to define the, and if I give the property, let me define length. Let L, which is the length, let L map from the power set of interval to R, to the set of real numbers. We have to, um, so, where these two raised power i that I have defined is the set of all the set of all intervals in R is the set of all intervals in R is the set of all intervals in R. And what are the what are the properties I want to give now? Number one is that the length length is always greater than or equal to zero. Length is not negative. That is the first property. For L, for all for all i in that belong to this that belong here, for every element that belong to the domain, the length is not is always greater than or equal to zero. So, um, why I'm giving all these properties because it will be useful in the Lebesgue outer measure and the Lebesgue measure itself. Number two is that uh, it, is, uh, it is monotone. That is, if, let me write the second one here. The second property the second property of length, of the length is that it is monotone. It is monotone. If I1 is fully inside I2, then the length of I1 will be less than or equal to the length of I2. The length of I1 will be less or equal to the length of I2, where I1 and I2 um, they are members of the set of all intervals in R. That's also another property of length. Now, the third one, the third property of length is that whenever you have length, the length of union of I starting from 1 to infinity of, uh, of I, I, it will always be less or equal to the summation. To the, that's what I use to solve this test example. Whenever you have union, union can come out. The union can uh, the union will come out and become summation. It will be less or equal to the summation of i starting from one to infinity of the length of i i. So now note uh, if if the i i's, uh, if the i i's, i in n are mutually disjoint, are mutually disjoint, that is, if they are disjoint, then it will become is equal to then the length of the union. Of i starting from 1 to infinity of i i will just be equal to summation of k of i starting from 1 to infinity of the length 
of I, I. That's what we are going to obtain. That's what we are going to have. Then the last thing we need to check is that length is translation invariant. So what is the meaning of length is translation invariant? Let S be inside R. Let S be an element of the real numbers. So the length of IK plus S is actually the same as the length of IK. That's what we call translation invariant. Now, all what I've been writing so far, um, all what I've been writing so far at the same time too in this case, IK, IK is inside an element of the domain. All what I've been writing so far is that I'm trying to build the, the Lebesgue outer measure on the length so that by the time we are going to be I will be defining the Lebesgue outer measure. You will be able to see what it's saying, what it means. Number one is that the length, length is not negative. This is what it means. Length is not negative. You can't take the length of something and you have a negative value. You see that it's always not negative. It can be zero, but or positive. Number two is that it is monotone. The meaning of monotone is that if you take any smaller interval. I1 is inside I2. By the time you take the length of this, of this one, it will be less than the length of the second one. Then again, which I, this is a sequence. If you take sequence of intervals, if you take a sequence of intervals and take the length of their union, it will be less or equal to the summation of the length of the individual intervals. But if the intervals are mutually disjoint, if the sequence of uh, intervals are mutually disjoint, that is, there is no intersection between them. That is, if you take any two interval, what this one means is that mutually this one means if you take i i intersection i j, it will be empty for all i and j for all i different from j for all i different from j. What this means is by the time you take any two intervals, maybe i one intersection i two, it will be empty. I2 intersection I3 it should be empty. I3 intersection I4 empty. I4 intersection I5 it should be empty. That means they are not, there's no intersection between them. That means they are disjoint. If you take the length of such, whereby everything is disjoint, then this place or equal to become equality. Now, again, the last one, let S be in R, that is, let S be a real number. If we take the length of an interval plus X plus a scalar, it's just the same thing as the length of this. Of this only, so that's why we call it. Uh, this is this this one. This one is called countable additivity. Why this one is called um, um, translation invariant? So that's the property of um, length I'm talking about. Now I want to. We need to define some things now. Before I define the Lebesgue outer measure, length of an open set in R. Let's see how we can define the length of an open set in R. Length of an open set. In R, R means the set of real numbers. Length of an open set in R. So now, an open set. An open set, O. I know the open set as O. Is a crown table. Is a crown table union. An open set O is a countable union of mutually disjoint of mutually of mutually disjoint open intervals. That is in R in the set of real number of mutually disjoint open intervals. So what does that mean? 
it means that when you have an open set in R, the open set is exactly equal to the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k. Where i k are open intervals. Are open intervals such that are open intervals such that what such that by the time you take any two of them i i that i j to be empty so that they are mutually disjoint it will be empty so i have this all i different from j so and all these things are from r so that is what we call an open set so that means if you want to take if you want to take the length of an open set in of an open set in r Length of an open set in R is equal to the length of the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k. And this one, obviously, I told you before that the union will come outside as a property of length to so become summation k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k. That's what we are going to have of the length of i k. So, that is what we have for opening tower. Then again, let's talk about the length of a closed set. Length of a closed set in, in an interval. Length of a closed set in a given interval. Now, I will let the let B be a closed set. Let B be a closed set in this particular interval. Let B be a closed set in this particular interval. What happens is that um, since B is a closed set, it means that the complement of B is open. So, and then um, to get the length, the length of a closed set, um, the length of B, this one will be equal to, actually, let me tell you what it means. B complement and B are inside, B complement and B B complement and B are inside this interval. What this means is that um, I have a closed interval AB. This is actually equal to B since B is the closed set here plus the complement of B or union since it's a set. Union the complement of B here. So I will just take the length. Take the length of both sides. Length of a comma b is equal to the length of b union b complement. Don't forget, I want to find the length of b, which is a closed set. The length here, this one is b minus a, is equal to the length of this one. This one will become length of b plus length of b complement since they are both disjoint. So to find length of b, length of b will now be equal to. The length of B will now be equal to B minus A, then minus the length of the open set you are given. And we know what open set is. Open set are union of open intervals, as we have as we have defined the other time. Mutually dis, uh, disjoint, mutually disjoint open intervals. Now, we now want to come to the concept of the outer measure itself. Now. Now, the first thing I'm going to write on is the Lebesgue outer measure. 
Ah. We want to define the Lebesgue outer measure in R. So let E, which is a subset of R, be a set. Then the Lebesgue outer measure. Then the level outer measure of E denoted by then the level outer measure of E denoted by denoted by mu star of E is given by or is given as the big outer measure of E is given as is equal to the infimum of summation k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k such that E is inside the union of k starting from 1 of ik now I'm going to tell you what ik is where ik are sequence of open intervals that is how we define the Lebesgue outer measure the Lebesgue outer measure of a set E is equal to the infimum of the summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of IK so that E is inside this, where IK are a sequence of open intervals. Now, let me explain what that means. Let me explain what that means. What we mean by all these things I've written. Let me explain the definition. Imagine, let me explain the definition. Imagine you want to, um, you want to find the area, the area of an irregular shape. How do we do it? We just try to, um, we try to find a way of making it regular. Imagine. We want to find the area of this shape. Let's call it E. We want to measure this. Since so, let's call it this. Let me make it. Let's call it E. So, I want to find the. I want to measure this. I want to measure this. What happened is that I will, I can find a circle. A circle. I will inscribe it in a circle, a circle that I will inscribe it in a circle. But in reality, if I find the area of the circle, the area of the circle will be bigger than the area here because all this place is not part of E. All this place am all this place. Is not part of E. All this place is not part of E. So I will call it outer measure. So the, the truth of the matter is that the area of the circle will be bigger than the area of, of E of the shape of the shape I call E. So what I'm trying to say is that when when you want to when you have E, it's as if you cannot easily find the length or the measure of E directly. So you will take an a circle. The circle is called open set. So look at it. I say let E be a set. Then the Lebesgue outer measure of E. You will take an open set that is inside E. E. Then you take an open set. Oh, so that E is inside the open set. That's what that's the first thing you do. 
we will take an open sensor that is inside the open set. Then what will happen is that since I'm in R, since I'm in R, the open set, I'll define open set in R are union of open intervals. Union of open intervals. So open set in R are union of open intervals. So the smallest, like you can see, this one will be bigger. Obviously, there are more circles that will, there are in fact another circle that can that can that can be there are bigger circles that it can be inscribed into. So you know this one is bigger than E. If you find the area here, the area of this circle I draw now will be far bigger than the area of this E. So the point is the smallest of the circle, the one that can easily approximate this shape E, that's what you are going to take. That's why they say that the Lebesgue outer measure of E is the infimum. Infimum means the smallest of those circles. Of what? Of the length of the open set. Since you cannot measure this, you are measuring the what is outside. Of the length of what? Of the length of O. You will not have to solve that E is inside O. Because of, of course there is no O in any of the in any of what you have defined. So that's why I say the outer measure of E is the infimum of the length of O. But where is O coming from? You will explain what o, where O is coming from. So that E is inside O. But what is O? We now say okay, O is an open set. So, but they don't normally write length of O like this. They don't write length of O. Since you are in R, O is union of open intervals. O is the union of open intervals. So that means the Lebesgue outer measure, the Lebesgue outer measure is the infimum of the length of O is union of open interval, you now write union, K starting from 1 to infinity of IK, so that you will not change the notation, so that E is inside the union, instead of writing O, you will change it to union, union of K starting from 1 to infinity of IK, now you will now explain what IK is, I, IK are open intervals, so say IK are sequence of open intervals, IK are open Are open intervals. That's what we are going to have. You see, I care open intervals. So now, from the property of length we are given before, the union will come out. And when union come out of a length, it will come to what? Summation. Summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k. So when union come out, it becomes summation, then you have length of i k. Then such that E is inside the union of K starting from 1 to infinity of IK and IK a sequence of open intervals. So a reality, that is why that's why that's how we come to the definition of the outer measure. The outer measure of a set E is the infimum of the summation. Of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k, so that e is inside the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k. And you will explain what i k is. i k are sequence of open intervals. So, basically, to, to summarize uh, what we define as the Lebesgue outer measure, to summarize what we define as the Lebesgue outer measure, we, what I'm trying to say is to define. To, to find the Lebesgue outer measure of a set E, it is infimum. What we come first is the infimum. Then E is covered by an open set. And what is that? So it is the length. It is the length of the open set you would take. But you don't write length of open set. Or the open set here is union of open intervals. So you write e length of Instead of open set, you write this union of open intervals. You write union of open intervals. Then you will now explain how all these ones come in. You will not say that you no, know, E is inside O, but you are changing to union of length of open intervals. So it becomes union of K starting from 1 to infinity. Then you just need to tell us what IK is. IK are open intervals. Where IK are sequence of open intervals. That's all. So, but of course, you have you are, I have told you before that whenever you have union, length of union, the union will come out to become summation. 
to become k starting from 1 to infinity, then you now have length of i k. So you will now write all this. We have saw that k is equal to this one, and uh, i k are open intervals, and that's all. That's all about uh, the definition of the Lebesgue outer measure. So, um, if you are in, in RD, if you are if we are going to define the Lebesgue outer measure in RD, that is maybe in RN or any other in RD, this one is in R. But if we are going to define the Lebesgue outer measure in RD, you will also say let E. The same approach, what I've explained in the first one is still what we are going to write. It's just some things that will just change. Let E be in RD, then the Lebesgue outer measure. Denoted by this, the Lebesgue outer measure denoted by the outer measure is given as is given as of course whenever you are defining the Lebesgue outer measure, infimum will be in, will be in front. Lebesgue outer measure in R D infimum of the summation. Of k starting from one to infinity, you know it is because we are in R. All these ones are intervals. But if you are in, let's say in R two, for instance, if you are in R, R is just one. It's just a straight line. So you take interval in R. So you can easily get the length of an interval. That's why they say length of an interval. So, but uh, if you are in R two, R two is two dimension. R two is you have another one, you have another one. So, by the time you break it into intervals in quotes, you have something like this. You have another one like this. So, this is now, this has now become a boss. It has become a boss. boss. So, if you are in R3 too, it's also a boss. Or a, it's also another one that you can't really draw on the board. So, in ROD, you will now take solution. Instead of length, you call it... Um, you call it cube. It is noted like this. Summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of this, so that e is inside, just the way we've written this, u k starting from 1 to infinity of i k, where, now, i k, where the i k are sequence. Of close, you can use close or open, whichever one is fine. Either close or open are close boxes. Yeah, it's no more an interval, it's now a box. So the outer measure is the infimum of summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of this. You have this. This is cube, cube, cube of the since they are both. So you find the you find the um you find the length. So finding the length of a box of an open or a closed box is denoted like this. So E is inside, this is the open set. So we have I K as sequence of closed buses. So that's what we have. Now, property of the outer measure. So we are going to state the properties of the Lebesgue outer measure. And we also prove them as well. Number one is that let E first be in R, B a set. So the first one is number one property is that the outer measure is non negative. The outer measure is non negative. Then number two is saying that uh, monotonicity is talking about monotonicity that if A is inside B, then the outer measure of A will also be less or equal to the outer measure 
of V. That is the second property of the outer measure. Uh, this one is called non negative. Outer measure is non negative. Why this one I just wrote, I just wrote now is uh, called monotonicity. <laughs> 